um, press release of the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, Mr. Olivier de Schuta. So we start with the press release, as we always do, with the reading of the statement of the rapporteur, and later we'll continue with the QA round. You must say your name and the name of the uh, media you represent. Thank you very much. So good morning uh, and very welcome to all. Let me first apologize for being late. I was uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, for a final debriefing session with um, representatives of the different ministries that um, I visited during the course of my visit and the uh, exchanges took um, slightly longer than was anticipated. My apologies again. I'd like to welcome you to this um, press conference that closes a 10 days long visit to the country. Um, as you know, I have been tasked by the Human Rights Council of the United Nations to monitor the progress achieved in the fight against poverty in the countries that I visit when these countries cooperate with the United Nations human rights system. So I'm very grateful that the government of Colombia agreed to cooperate uh, with me uh, by inviting me to the country to assess the efforts that are pursued in the fight against poverty. I have been supported during this visit by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, and I would like to thank them very warmly for their support. Special thanks uh, to our dear friend Juan Ricardo Aldonado and the team that came uh, with me from Geneva includes um, Dorte Simonson, Maria Garza Torrente, and Kate Holmes. During my visits, I have been speaking to a large number of officials in Bogota, but I've also been traveling to Benventura and Cali, as well as Suacha, south of Bogota, and in Bogota itself, in the neighborhood of Ciudad Bolivar. And I met with a large number of organizations, social leaders, uh, people in poverty across um, these uh, trips in the country. Let me try to summarize my preliminary observations whilst noting that these are still very preliminary and that my final report on the visit will be presented to the Human Rights Council in June 2025. Um, and that final report will be uh, prepared in the next few months. I will uh, continue to co cooperate with the government in the preparation of that report. The state of poverty in the country has been um, improving in recent years. Um, today, we have some 33% of the population in the country that is in poverty, some 11.4% that are in extreme poverty. These are high numbers, but they are a progress in comparison to recent years. Um, and um, a significant um, part of the progress was the result of reforms introduced under this administration. Multidimensional poverty that looks into not only monetary income, but also living conditions and access to healthcare and nutrition and adequate housing um, is lower than monetary poverty it is 12.1% in 2023. So progress is achieved and the country is on the right track. But a number of um, challenges remain, not least because some groups in the country are significantly uh, poorer than other groups, the Afro-descendants and indigenous peoples in particular, because regional disparities remain extremely important Departments such as Choco, La Guajira, Sucre, and Bolivar are um, in a much worse situation than other parts of the country. And thirdly, and most importantly, because inequality levels remain very high in the country, with a Gini coefficient, a measure of inequality that ranks Colombia amongst the most unequal countries in the world. Part of the reason is because of the vicious cycles that exist 
between poverty and violence. Now, obviously, as you know, the continuation of conflict in the country results in poverty. Conflict means that 8.6 million people in the country have been displaced, fleeing conflict, and unfortunately, these populations live in very poor housing conditions. They are subject to extortionary practices by moneylenders. This is called gota a gota. Um, they are regularly forced into confinement by the armed groups that control parts of the territory. And as entrepreneurs, they have to pay small vacunas, ransoms, uh, in order to be uh, protected from um, executions of violence. This, of course, makes it very difficult to combat poverty and in these zones under the control of the armed groups, it is very difficult for the, for the government to provide public services. By the same token, however, poverty causes violence and contributes to its perpetuation. Um, Poverty is uh, exposing young adults at the risk of being recruited in the armed gangs. And um, it means that poker farmers will have fewer opportunities to move away from illicit crop production. Now, of course, the priority for the country is to protect displaced persons from further marginalization. The poverty rate amongst the displaced um, people, victims of the conflict, is 51.4%, which is significantly higher than the national average of 33%. And so these people deserve particular attention from the government. For the displaced people, the priority is to have their houses legalized in order to be able to use their property as a collateral to have access to microcredit. And um, it is to be um, um, supported in access to public services. The main challenge the country is facing beyond dealing with the legacy of conflict is to reduce inequality levels and to ensure social mobility. Colombia is the country globally um, and that achieves the worst in indicators of social mobility. In Colombia, it will take 11 generations for a person born within the first 10% to have an equal chance of having median income. 11 generations mean that people can die many times before they manage to overcome this disadvantage. The main reason why social mobility is so weak in the country is because of the stratification system that essentially classifies people according to the neighborhood in which they live from um, the lowest um, income neighborhoods, the bajo bajo um, stratum number one, to the highest earning neighborhoods, um, neighborhoods uh, classified under stratum six, the alto um, stratum um, as described here. Now, initially the system was well intended. The idea was the normal one to ensure that people living in low income areas would pay less for public utilities and those living in high income areas would pay more for their water, for their gas and electricity, subsidizing public services for low income neighborhoods. However, this system is becoming deeply perverse. First of all, because the targeting it, it achieves by blocks uh, or housing units, if you wish, is very imperfect. You may have families that are relatively rich benefiting from subsidized access to public utilities. And conversely, you may have relatively poor families living in um, strata five or six in better off neighborhoods and yet um, paying high bills for the public utilities, despite being relatively poor. But more importantly, the stratification system is a major reason why social mobility is so weak in the country. The reason is 
that children raised in Sata 1 or 2, for example, only have social connections with people that are relatively poor in their immediate vicinity. They attend um, schools that um, generally would be of less good quality, I will return to that, to that point. And people living in Sata 5 and 6, they barely encounter people in poverty in their everyday lives. That results in social segregation that is institutionally enforced. And the problem is that as a result of this separation between different strata, poverty continues to be rampant in the country. Negative stereotypes about people in poverty are very common. And that is, to a certain extent, unavoidable when the richest people in Colombia only know about the circumstances of people living in poverty through the drivers driving their cars, the security guards surveying their homes, or the cooks preparing their meals, or the housekeeper um, cleaning the homes. That is deeply problematic, and that should be re-examined. And this is why I welcome the plans of this administration to move beyond the stratification system by introducing the Universal Income Registry, the Registro Universal de Ingresos, as a much better way to target incomes, um, households in need of public support based on their incomes in particular. Whilst uh, work is made uh, to move towards the Universal Income Registry, many areas um, deserve the attention of the government. Let me turn first to employment. This administration has been increasing the statutory minimum wage, um, and that increase has been more significant than the inflation rate, the increase of the cost of living. This is one major contribution of this government to reducing poverty and has lifted probably 1.6 million people from poverty um, over the past two years. In addition, the government is proposing to abandon the contrato sindical, which is a major source of particularization of work. And I think it is, again, a positive step. The most important challenge that the government is facing, however, is to deal with the informal sector. 55 to 60% of the workforce in this country is informal. And informal workers are not protected by labor legislation as they should. They, of course, do not benefit from social security. Um, more should be done in order to address this um, question. Of course, it's a delicate balance that has to be found between protecting the rights of informal workers on one hand and making formalization desirable on the other hand by positive incentives and by um, um, giving reasons for employers to register their workers. I propose in my initial uh, recommendations to the government a two-track approach consisting first in better protecting informal workers in areas such as minimum wage legislation, health and safety at work, unionization, um, and the right to be protected from discrimination, because better protecting informal workers is a way to avoid them being exploited by unscrupulous employers, thus giving a reason for employers to formalize the workers by making it more uh, difficult to continue to abuse the weak position of informal workers. And the second track is to gradually bring informal workers into um, the protection of social security by progressively extending to them um, the, um, um, uh, the benefits that uh, are enjoyed today only by formal workers. Employers could be given more incentives to formalize workers, um, and this could be done, for example, by reducing the social contributions they pay during the first years following formalization, or by reserving public contracts to the employers that formalize workers. 
We also discussed in many meetings um, all that has to do with social protection and public services. And here one major uh, area in which improvements could be made is the use of CISBEN, the system of identification of beneficiaries of social programs that is used in order to target um, uh, subsidized healthcare and a number of cash transfer programs, including the Renta Ciudadana, the flagship cash transfer program of, of the government. Clearly, CISBEN is not working well. Targeting is very imperfect. And uh, many people in remote areas, in the rural um, areas of the country, are not registered in the system because um, municipal workers are not visiting these households. Moreover, those registered um, as A and B, very poor or poor, in the classification system of CISBEN, increasingly are um, stigmatized as um, um, CISBENizado, um, people who benefit from subsidies from the richest groups of the population. And that reads poverty, apodophobia, negative stereotypes um, against people in poverty. The introduction of CISBEN 4, the most recent methodology under CISBEN, will not address this problem. And I, therefore, for that reason too, I welcome the fact that CISBEN will be gradually replaced with the introduction of the Universal Income Registry, the Registro Universal de Ingresos, which I think is a step in the right direction. One area in which Colombia is to be commended for its achievements is healthcare. 98.6% of the population of the country is covered either by the contributory healthcare system or under CISBEN by the subsidized um, healthcare system, and that is a remarkable achievement. In addition, only 14% of the total healthcare expenditure in the country um, is covered by out-of-pocket spending by the patients, and that is a very low um, sacrifice uh, requested from patients. Um, lower even than the OECD average, and that is a quite remarkable achievement um, of the country. The only remaining challenge here concerns access to healthcare in rural areas. Some people need to travel long distances and many hours before having access to a doctor or to an emergency um, medical service in rural areas. And I welcome the commitment to improve this in the next few years. The sector of education is more problematic. Schools in Colombia are very um, unequal in the kind of education they provide. It is striking to me that although 97 out of the 100 best schools in the country are private schools, the vast majority of children from low-income households attend public schools, and public schools provide a less good quality education. The teacher-to-pupil ratio is much uh, worse in public schools, and the quality of the teaching is much worse, and that is a major source of uh, disparity and of um, the perpetuation of poverty from one generation to the next. Of course, I welcome the efforts that are made to bridge those gaps, uh, particularly the um, proposal introduced yesterday by the Ministry of Education to improve the funding of public universities in order to um, bridge the gap between um, uh, students from different social backgrounds. I also believe Colombia could do more to move towards becoming an inclusive society that values diversity instead of maintaining social segregation. I make a number of proposals concerning how to fight 
poverty is aporophobia, how to protect people in poverty from the discrimination that they face. And although the Constitutional Court has adopted a number of uh, judgments concerning this issue, the legislature could do more to provide remedies to victims of discrimination on grounds of social economic disadvantage. Women also are impacted by poverty more than men. And in Colombia, as in many other countries, poverty has the face of a woman. It is striking to me, for example, that 40% of female-headed households are in poverty, when only 32% of male-headed households are in that same um, situation. Some progress is made towards addressing this disparity. Law 1413 of 2010 recognizes the care economy and the recent reform of the pension system is uh, a very um, strong encouragement by recognizing to um, women who have uh, children 50 additional weeks per children that they give birth to, up to a maximum of 150 weeks after three children. And that is um, a very important acknowledgement of the additional burdens that women shoulder um, as they have to interrupt or delay their careers um, in order to um, shoulder these responsibilities um, uh, linked to the care that they provide. More should be done, however, to improve equal access to land rights for women and to combat gender-based violence. And the document that you were um, distributed provides details in this regard. I also note that persons with disabilities um, deserve to be better protected um, in the country. In 2020, a certification system was introduced and obtaining this certification is a condition for persons with disabilities and their families to benefit from certain social policies that are addressed to persons with disabilities. However, from the testimonies I received, it appears that obtaining this certificate may be very burdensome, particularly um, given that the healthcare system is not well equipped, uh, does not have the capacity to respond to the demand of persons with disabilities in this regard, and persons with disabilities may face mobility constraints. Let me perhaps close with three final remarks. First, the commitment of the government of Colombia towards reducing poverty and inequalities will only be delivered upon if more resources can be mobilized to that effect. And this is especially the case since the government operates under a fiscal rule introduced uh, initially under the law 1473 of 2011, imposing a ceiling to the level of the public debt that cannot exceed 50, 55% of the country's GDP. Now, I have doubts about the wisdom of this rule, which does not make uh, any distinction between investments for the future that contribute to the rise of the public debt or expenses, uh, current expenses of the government that are not investments for the future. But given that this fiscal rule exists, it is necessary for the government to mobilize domestic resources more efficiently in order to finance social protection and public services. The tax reform introduced uh, by law 2277 in 2022 is a step in the right direction. That law closes a number of exemptions that benefit the richest groups of the population. It introduces um, an income tax that is more progressive, higher for the highest income earners, and it also um, uh, introduces 
the wealth tax. The reform could go further. Unfortunately, the weight in the public revenue of the country of indirect taxes remains quite important. Um, and the Constitutional Court, as you know, has struck down one important component of this tax reform, which is um, uh, the impossibility for corporations to deduct from their taxable income what they pay in royalties for the exploitation of non-renewable resources in the extractive industry. I believe that the Constitutional Court's decision in this regard is misguided. I deplore that uh, this provision was struck down, depriving the government from a very important source of income. Um, and I hope that the Constitutional Court, which will have to decide whether the wealth tax introduced with the tax reform uh, passes scrutiny, will not strike down that other important component of the tax reform. My second remark concerns the drug policy. As we know, the 2016 peace agreement included a commitment to encourage coca farmers to move from illicit crop production, i.e. the growing of coca leaves, to illicit crop production. Unfortunately, this component of the peace agreement is not implemented quite at the pace um, that it should. The reasons for this are multifold, uh, but the most important reason is that shifting from one crop to another is not simply um, an agronomic question or a technical question. It requires that the campesinos, the coca farmers, the cocaleros, are supported in operating the shift by access to inputs, to technology, to uh, credit, uh, but especially by access to markets. And as long as they will not have economically viable alternatives, they will continue to produce coca, and they do so today under the threat they um, receive from the armed groups in the areas of the country in which they operate. So this is a complicated situation, and I welcome the fact that President Petro has been very explicit about the need to encourage a dialogue about the limits of the war on drugs approach that was adopted over the past 50 years, this um, criminalized, criminalization approach is not delivering results. Um, Colombian society is paying a very high price for this approach that deserves to be rethought at international level. My final comment concerns refugees and migrants. I would like here to commend Colombia for its extremely generous approach towards receiving the refugees from Venezuela since the crisis uh, unfolded in Venezuela 10 years ago. Colombia has received almost 3 million Venezuelan refugees. And the generosity of Colombia towards these refugees has been nothing short of remarkable. They were provided, at least 70% of them were provided with a temporary protection permit, the Permiso por Protección Temporal, the PPT, that provides them with access to healthcare, education, and especially access to employment. This is extremely important, and I would like to quote from what the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees has said about this policy, it cited this policy as, and I quote, an extraordinary example of humanity, commitment towards human rights, and pragmatism. And indeed, not only is this open door policy very generous and based on human rights, it is also one that is pragmatic. By providing access to employment, you allow these refugees to make an income by their work, you allow them to contribute to social contributions and to pay taxes, and that is the best way to reduce their dependency on 
public charities and on non-governmental organizations. It is therefore unfortunate that since November 2023, the Permiso por Protección Temporal, the PPT, is not um, delivered um, anymore. Um, as a result of this change in policy, almost half a million Venezuelan refugees are in fact irregular migrants in Colombia. And although they can apply for asylum in the country, they're provided as asylum seekers only with a temporary permit, the salvo conducto, valid for three, six or 12 months, that does not provide them with access to work. And that, I believe, is um, problematic. I believe this is a violation of the international government on the economy, social and cultural rights, and I very much encourage the government to review its um, policy in this regard. At the same time, I reiterate my gratefulness for its generous approach towards welcoming Venezuelan refugees, and I welcome the announcement by the government that it will regularize some 600,000 um, additional migrants in the next few months. I would like to close with this. I welcome, of course, your questions. I look forward to my continued collaboration with um, the government of Colombia, and I reiterate my thanks for its willingness to cooperate with the United Nations human rights system. The challenge today is to deliver on the promises that were made in the next uh, couple of years, to move fast enough not to disappoint, and to move slowly enough in order to keep the Colombian society united behind the fight against poverty. Thank you very much. Eh, rotamos el peso en la sala. Por favor, si hay alguna pregunta. Eh, gracias por, eh, por este informe, por el labor. Eh, Silván Cruz de RTBC, la televisión pública y la radio pública de Colombia. Bueno, digo, es que no es un video, pero me Thanking you for this report and the presentation. I am Ivan Cruz from Public Television and Public Television. I wanted to ask you whether you know about the attempts of the national government to pass the social reforms on health, education, labor, pension, retirement, and the negative uh, response from the majority of the Congress in Colombia, and they won't approve them. Did you know about this? Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Cruz, for this question. These reforms have to be uh, dealt with um, separately, each of them uh, presenting their own dynamics. As regards the healthcare reform, I think it's um, welcome that the EPSs, the um, insurance uh, bodies responsible for um, compensating the health service providers um, will be more carefully monitored in the use of resources that they um, uh, manage. Um, there have been instances of abuse within the EPSs, and I believe the healthcare reform, therefore, um, should be seen as a step in the right direction in the fight against uh, corruption and the diversion of public funds. Um, as regards the education reform, I understand that the major obstacle to change was the mobilization of teachers in the public service, the public uh, education sector. Um, however, um, whilst I understand the concerns of the unions, um, I think the um, willingness to improve the quality of the public education sector is uh, to be um, commended. Um, it should be recalled that uh, in some parts of the country, 
education poverty is very poor. Um, a large percentage of the children um, are not able to read and write well at 10 years of age. And so um, much needs to be improved in the public schools. That is, Mr. Cruz, the most significant contribution a government can make to avoiding the perpetuating gender of um, poverty from one generation to the next. It is by improving the quality of education. That means investing more in public schools. That means ensuring that the quality of the teaching provided is improved. And that means um, allowing easier access for low-income um, uh, students to higher uh, education to university. Um, finally, as regards the pension reform, I said a few words about this. I think uh, it is, uh, again, an improvement. I particularly welcome the fact that under the program Major Colombia, um, the um, older persons above eight years of age um, are better protected and that the level of um, uh, the benefits they receive has significantly increased uh, to some 800,000 uh, Colombian pesos per month, um, protecting them from the risk of falling into extreme poverty. So I believe these reforms um, um, should be in general welcomed. Um, of course, it takes many negotiations uh, to go through the four debates in Congress and pass uh, the constitutional scrutiny of the Constitutional Court. Um, um, and that is what I was referring to when I mentioned that the government should go fast enough not to disappoint and slow enough to keep the people united behind these reforms. Good morning and warm welcome to the special rapporteur. Welcome to our country. Can you hear me okay? What is your name and the name of the media you represent? I am Adela Luna. I am a director of the TV Costa Regional Channel. And my question is as follows. What measures, what specific measures would you request from the government to approach the problem of the illegal drug trafficking in Colombia? Well, thank you, um, Ms. Luna, for this uh, question. And it is indeed a major um, issue in the country and a major uh, challenge that the government is facing. Um, in my conversations with the government, I recommended a, a two steps approach. The first step is in line with the international consensus on this issue, and particularly with the um, position adopted by the General Assembly of the United Nations. The first step is to pursue alternative development strategies for the cocaleros in the country. And that means encouraging them to shift away from illicit crop production towards other crop production, illicit crop production. But that requires agrarian reform. That requires providing them with access to inputs, to credits, to technology, to markets. In other terms, agrarian reform and food sovereignty are the answer to the current um, scourge of um, illicit crop production and trafficking in the country. It's not an easy task. 200,000 hectares are under coca cultivation in the country, and this will take time. The second step in the longer term should be to rethink more fundamentally um, the approach taken so far uh, by the international community um, on this issue. And a dialogue should take place between um, uh, producing countries, um, uh, receiving countries where the users are based and countries of transit in order to rethink how we could move from the current approach that leads to the militarization of society uh, to an approach that is based uh, much more on, on risk uh, uh, mitigation, um, on harm um, mitigation, as more and more experts are currently recommending. And that can be based on human rights. Uh, today, Colombia is paying a very high price for what is called, um, in English, the war on drugs, la lucha contra la droga, 
Um, and I believe the, the, the intentions expressed by President Petro to uh, provoke a dialogue on this topic at international level uh, should be welcomed. Thank you. Working now. Well, good afternoon. This is Cristiana Navarro from Caracol Radio. My question, Mr. Rapporteur, is about the picture that you were able to observe during your visit around the country. What would be the measures the soon or uh, quick measures that the Colombian state should implement to overcome poverty and as a result, protect the young from being recruited from illegal armed groups in Colombia? Um, there is no you fix against poverty. Um, but it is one thing to reduce um, the global or the overall numbers of people in poverty, as the government has tried to do, uh, and the uh, um, delays incurred as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic that has hit Colombia very hard have now been um, uh, compensated for. Um, and another thing is to bridge the gaps between uh, the different groups of the population. The fastest route towards reducing poverty is to reduce inequalities and to make sure that Afro-descendants, indigenous peoples, women, persons with disabilities um, are better protected by the different social protection programs um, and the um, reforms of the labor market that are introduced. So I made a number of proposals in, in this regard. Um, the main, um, I think, change I have encouraged the government to make concerns how social programs are reaching households in need of support and substituting to the CISBAN system uh, with the um, A, B, C, and D's banks, the Registro Universal de Ingresos is a very important shift and abandoning the stratification system that is such an obstacle to social mobility in the country uh, um, is also going to be extremely important. And these are two recommendations that the government agrees with. Uh, the question is um, um, how to move towards this by providing a viable alternative that will ensure much better targeting of social programs so that people who need support will be supported and people who do not need support um, will be able to, to, to contribute to that uh, effort of the country. Okay, is there any other question? I don't think there are more questions. Thank you very much for joining us today in the uh, press release. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.